Hi everyone, Dave here at East Rosebud Fly and Tackle, Billings, Montana. Welcome. Today I'm going to tie a pattern that I created, just call it Dave's Simple Salmon. The purpose of this fly is more to show you how to use some different materials in ways you may not have thought of before. I'm going to show you how to furl poly yarn to make this extended body. Of course I use a dubbing loop to do the body. And also we're going to be using a different material for the wing. We get into this habit of always using elk and deer and things like that. There is a lot of different winging material out there that has some really nice effects. So I'm going to be using some gray fox for the wing and show you how to do that. Okay, so we'll the whole idea with this fly, folks, is to use a longer fly on a shorter hook. A long hook shank gives trout leverage, either when they shake their head or they can actually dig that into the bottom and force that hook out of their jaw. So I'm using this O'Shaughnessy Komodo 8088. This is a size six, so you still get good hook gap, but I'm gonna effectively increase the length of the shank by using furled poly yarn. So for the thread, I'm using Uni Big Fly. If you've never used Big Fly thread before, it's kind of a revelation in that it does not stretch. There's no stretch at all in this thread. So I'm gonna start the thread here. I'm gonna tie in some 100 denier GSP and just kind of let you think about it. Think about how I might use this in concert with what I'm doing. So all the way to the end, and I'm going to give myself you know, four or five inches of this GSP thread. Curling yarn is very, very easy. This is about oh, three inches of black poly yarn. Of course, poly comes in a ton of different colors. You could also use sparkle yarn. So I'm tying this in, and the deal with poly yarn is it is slick. That's why I'm using this thread that has no stretch in it. You really want to get this down tight. You could also add a little zappy gap to this if you wanted to. And that's a lot more than just a little. Let's see if I won't stick my finger together here later on in the show. Okay. All right, so this is about the only time I use this style of hackle plier, but I'm going to grab both the poly yarn and the GSP. Make sure I have them both here, like so. And then simply twist it. Twist it until it starts to furl on itself. Now this takes a little practice. You can overdo it, underdo it. It's just easy to add or subtract a twist or two. So you can see it's getting pretty tight. And when I bring it down like this, bingo, it does this. Well, you can make this about hook shank in length, I wouldn't go much longer than that because then you start getting into issues with it wrapping around the bend of the hook. You got a few things to trim off there, but that's the basic principle. Now, why the GSP thread? Support to help keeping this pull out. If a fish's tooth gets caught in this poly yarn, you could pull it right off the hook. The GSP anchored the way it is will help to keep that from happening. Trim that off. A little more on there. Really make sure that's wrapped down tight. And I'll, we'll just say I put a little more zappy gap on there. I don't want to fuse my fingers together. Okay, so I'm going to be using some craw dub in bright orange. I'm going to go ahead and make a dubbing loop. If you're not comfortable, but making dubbing loops, as I tell my students, it's one of the most powerful tools in fly tying is a dubbing loop. Bring it down four or five inches. Bring it right back up to where you brought your thread down. Two wraps around there. You want to close the top of the loop by making a couple of wraps around the loop itself. Okay, Tighten it and then bring your thread forward to wherever you want to stop it. I need to leave room for a wing here. Oh, I'll get my trusty bobbin holder in here. Throw a half hitch, like so. All right. 
So it can help when you've got a slick synthetic dubbing like this to put a little bit of dubbing wax in between the loops. Sometimes I have to go with a super tacky wax, but I really don't like to use that if I don't have to. And then this is just, we're just going to feed dubbing into this. You really use a lot less dubbing in a dubbing loop than if you would direct dub. The thing is, don't overload it. People put way too much dubbing in these loops and it ends up just being a clotted mess. I've lost one finger here. All right, kind of make sure your dubbing is centered within that dubbing loop. Move it around till you're happy with it. And then just twist it. This is a turbo type of dubbing twister, but anything will work. These are just faster. I want to start right there. Wrap this in touching turns up to where I'm going to tie in my wing, which is right there. Tie this off with just a couple of wraps. Remove the rest of the loop. And you can easily brush this out to make it stand out a little better, float a little better, just give it a bigger presence on the water. Okay, for the wing, I'm using gray fox hair. There are lots of different hairs out there, raccoon, badger, foxes that have beautiful markings on them. So just like using deer hair, I'm going to cut off a patch of it here. It's got beautiful dubbing. The underfur is beautiful for a tannish colored fly. For example, if you want to tie some caddis flies or something like that, certainly save this dubbing. I don't like to take all of it out. It makes the wing look a little wimpy if you take it all out. And I want the tips of the wing to extend all the way to the back of the tail, okay? Because with stone flies, the wings actually extend a little bit farther than the tail. Couple of wraps to tie it down, trim it close. And unlike deer or elk hair, you don't have to worry about this hair flaring and going all over the place. So that's a simple way to furl poly yarn, and that's a different wing material for you to give a try. All right?